50,000 people singing along with them. I hope to be back with more pregame comments in just a minute, but here's Gary Sanders with the starting lineup. Thank you, Gusty. First of all, for Georgia on offense and center, Kendall Keith, a senior from Jessup, Georgia, 6'2", 230. Guards, Roy Smith from Savannah, 6'3", 240, a senior, and John Jennings from Columbia, South Carolina, 6'1", 220, and a senior. The tackles, Paul Person of Atlanta, 6'5", 240, a junior. Tom Nash of Washington, Georgia, 6'5", 235, a senior. The tight end, Mike Green from Jacksonville, Florida, 6'4", 225, a senior. Split end, Lynn Honeycutt from Rome, Georgia, 6'2", 186, a junior. The fullback will be Robert Honeycutt of Greenville, South Carolina, 6'1", 210, junior. Tailback, Jimmy Poulos from Atlanta, Georgia, 5'11", 178, a sophomore. Flanker, Jimmy Shirer from Ellery, South Carolina, 6'8", 180, senior. And they have not definitely announced their quarterback, James Ray, the junior from Columbia, South Carolina, 6'3", 185. Andy Johnson, sophomore from here in Athens, 6'8", 190. I'm sure we'll see both during the afternoon. The Auburn offense today, Bill McManus at center, 5'9", 197, senior from Dalton, Georgia. Guards, Larry Hill from Alexander City, 6'8", 254, senior. Jay Casey from Selma, Alabama, 6'8", 228, junior. The tackles will be Danny Spiker of Montgomery, 6'2", 236, senior. And Mac Lorendo of Auburn, a 6'2", 230, junior. Tight end, Robbie Robinette from Columbus, Mississippi, 6'3", 212, and a senior. Split end, All-American Terry Beasley from Montgomery, 5'11", 186, and a senior. Flanker, Dick Smalls of Birmingham, 6'1", 190, and a senior. Running backs, Tommy Lowry of Aniana, Alabama, 5'10", 205, senior. And Terry Henley of Oxford, Alabama, 5'11", 182, junior. The quarterback, All-American Pat Sullivan of Birmingham, 6 feet, 190, and a senior. Defensively, Bob Brown and Eddie Welsh, the ends. Benny Sibley and Tommy here out to tackles. Mike Neal, John Hayworth, Bill Luca, and Mike Flynn, the linebackers. Three deep of Dave Beck, Johnny Simmons, and David Langer. Those are the starting lineups. We'll be back with a toss of the coin and other pregame activities in 60 seconds. Once again, from Sanford Stadium in Athens, the Auburn Tigers just won the toss. Here's Gusty Year out. Auburn, with, with their captains Pat Sullivan and Tommy Year out, have just won the toss, have elected to receive at the south end zone. Georgia will be kicking off and defending the north end zone. Okay. The official... Go ahead, Gusty, with your officials, The please. officials for today's football game will be the referee, James Artley, the umpire, Buddy Patey, the head linesman, Robert Gaston, and the field judge, Butch Lambert. The back judge will be Johnny Grace and the electric clock operator, Bill Henderson. The wind is from the north. Georgia will have the wind. Before we get underway, let's pause right now, 10 seconds, for station identification. This is the Auburn Football Network. And this is WAPI, WAPI FM Stereo, the powerful twin voices of Alabama in Birmingham in 30 seconds, 1 o'clock. Once again, this is Gary Sanders along with Gusty Year out. Our spotters are Bill Wingard and Kess Fabian. Our engineer is Dave Andrews. Georgia in red with the white trim will be kicking off. Auburn in white with orange and blue trim will be receiving. Auburn winning the toss, taking the ball. Georgia takes the win, which is coming out of the north in uh, Athens here today at uh, 8 to 15 miles an hour. Looks to be in about the 10 mile an hour category, if uh, you want to guess. Terry Henley and uh, James Owens are going to go deep for Auburn. Steve White, a junior from West Point, Georgia, 6 feet 185, will kick off. Henley, the starting tailback from Oxford. Owens, who is now a split end, 6'2", 198, junior from Fairfield, Alabama. Deep for the Auburn Tigers. They're waiting on the goal line. Well, this is the game people have been waiting for, and here it is. Auburn, Georgia from Athens. Nice to have you with us. White moves on the football, and here we go. The kick is a squibbler that's going to hit short on the 15, bounces up in the air and goes out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Georgia will kick it again as they are penalized five yards for illegal procedure and will kick from the 45. That ball uh, rode sort of funny. It did not uh, end over end. It did not spiral. It kind of went sideways through the air. And White has got the wind behind him, a pretty good wind behind him. So uh, he apparently either missed that ball or they're trying to keep it away from a run back. I saw Erskine Russell, the defensive coach, talk to White just before he went on the field. And Georgia may have been trying to avoid a run back with that kick. But they kicked it out of bounds. So we'll start from the 35. Move Henley and Owens up to the Auburn five-yard line now, and Georgia will kick it all over again. An absolutely packed stadium in uh, Athens, Georgia, and here we go. White's kick is high, end over end, down the middle. Henley catches it on the 12, 17, 20, 25, 30, 35, and out to the 37-yard line. Terry Henley, he fumbled the ball. He 
fumbled the ball, and Auburn recovered it. Ball got away from Henley for a minute on the bottom of the pile. Was recovered in there by Jake Casey of Selma, Alabama. Jim Harper, a cornerback, was down under to make the play for Georgia, the tackle on Henley, and Auburn will take over on the 38-yard line, first and 10 to go. Give Jay Casey a save there, as there was a big pile, but I feel certain that the officials had ruled a fumble. All right, here's the slot formation. Beasley is wide left. Smoltz is in the slot. Pat Sullivan with the eye backfield is going to give to Henley on a slight delay, and he's over the 40 to about the 41 and knock down at that point. At the 41-yard line, Chip Wisdom, the linebacker from Atlanta, is the first man to hit him. Along with Wisdom is Steve Kitchens, the other linebacker. They have Mixon Robinson and Milton Bruce, Paul McPippen, Dennis Watson, and Chuck Hurd across the front. The linebackers are Wisdom and Kitchens. The rover is Sullivan. Don Golden is the safety. Once again, they go Beasley left, and this time Smoltz is right. Second down and three to go for the Auburn Tigers. And Pat Sullivan got some movement out of the Georgia line as he took the snap, ran the option, turns up, 45-50, Georgia 45 and out of bounds on a 44-yard line. Stop was made by Buzzy Rosenberg, the cornerback, as Sullivan kept it himself on the option, and he's out of bounds on the Georgia 46, it's first down Auburn. Good block by Smoltz out there on the corner. First, first down of the ball game. We did not get a penalty flag that time, but a Georgia defensive lineman had started his movement and was leaning the wrong way. That helped uh, Smoltz get an angle on him as that lineman, Milton Bruce, was trying to uh, come inside. Smoltz knocked him on in and gave uh, Sullivan running room. Slot formation left. Pat Sullivan straight ahead to Lowry, a yard, maybe two. No, he fought his way onto the 40. Give Lowry four yards. There was no hole there, but he crashed right over Dennis Watson. Watson, 6'2", 225, senior from Avondale, Georgia. In the slot left with Beasley out wide. Smaltz, the slot man. High backfield. Here comes Lowry up the middle. No, sir. Maybe a yard. Maybe a yard as Lowry tried to go up the middle. And he was hit first in there by Big Chuck Hurd, the defensive end from Macon, Georgia. Dennis Watson was also in on a play. Virtually no gain. It'll be third down and six. Ball just inside the 40. He may have gotten a half yard out of that one. It'll be 40 of Georgia. Auburn moving into the wind in this first quarter. And it's a brisk enough wind. The flags are standing out. All right. Uh, Smaltz is left. Beasley is right on the short side. Sullivan, first throw of the day. Rush after him. Screen to Lowry. Lowry to the 40. 35, 30 to the 27-yard line. First down, Auburn. Lowry on the screen. Mac Lorendo got out there to lead it. Made a great play as he blocked Chip Wisdom, the linebacker. Golden, the safety, and Rosenberg, the cornerback, make the stop. First and 10, Auburn on the Georgia 27. Chip Wisdom may have seen a screen coming. He was out there near Lowry, but Mac Lorendo took him completely out of the play and knocked him flat on his back. First and 10, Auburn on the Georgia 27. Auburn with two first downs. Georgia penalized on the opening kick. It went out of bounds, and Auburn got it out to the 38 when uh, the second kick from the 35. All right, here is uh, slot formation. A flag, too much time. Penalty flag goes down as Sullivan had a slot to the left, but he's Slot formation to the wide side, the left eye backfield of Lowry and Henley. Here is Lowry up the middle. He got uh, to about the 28, and that's all. Not much running room in the middle of that Georgia line. Big Chuck Hurd was there, Milton Bruce, Dennis Watson, uh, all the uh, middle of the offensive line, giving Lowry trouble as he got a yard, maybe two. They give him the 29-yard line. Officially, it'll go down as a three-yard gain. So call it second down and 12 for Auburn. First period, no score. Auburn on the Georgia 29. Beasley and Smalls are out wide to the right with Beasley left as Beasley is a wide man. Sullivan throwing, the rush is after him. He throws it as he's going down, completes the fault at the 10. Smalls to the 5. Smalls is out of bounds on the one-yard line. Dick Smalls is out of bounds on the one, and Pat Sullivan was on the way down as Chuck Hurd had him and was knocking him down. Phil Sullivan made the play back at the one-yard line on Dick Smalls. First and goal to go, Auburn. What a play by Pat Sullivan. He was on the way down as he threw the football. He completed it to Smalls at the 10, and Smalls ran very well to get to where they rule now the two-yard line. He stepped out of bounds. First and goal on the two for Auburn. 
Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy candidate, making the big play. Third, the defensive end, he threw it about halfway down and got it to Smalls. First and goal at the two, high backfield for Auburn. Sullivan, long count, here's Henley, straight ahead. No, he just missed it by a half, a half a yard. Great play by Mixon Robinson. Henley was by Mixon Robinson, he looked like he was in the end zone, and Robinson got a hold of his leg and stopped him. Second and goal inside the one. That was Terry Henley. We are between the two coaches' booths. We have the Auburn coaches to our left, the Georgia coaches to our right. And if you hear a little enthusiasm every now and then, these coaches sometimes don't need the phones to get down to the sidelines with instructions. All right, here's wide out to either side. Second and goal. Here's Henley in motion. Sullivan giving to Lowry. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown, Auburn. Tommy Lowry from the one-yard line. Five remaining, 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Great play in that drive was Sullivan's off-balance pass. As Hurd was knocking him down, Sullivan threw the ball about halfway down to the ground and completed it to Dick Smaltz at the 10. And I will say Smaltz did some good running. To get Kicking will be Gardner Jett. Jett, an Atlanta, Georgia youngster at 5'8", 146. Dave Beck, the cornerback on the defense, has the snap down. The kick is up. It's good with timeout on the field. The score is Auburn 7, Georgia nothing. All right, here to kick off is Roger Pruitt. Pruitt, Jimmy Pulos, and Buzzy Rosenberg are deep for Georgia. First time the dogs get the ball, it's going to be Rosenberg catching it on the five. Rosenberg, 10, 15, trying to go wide at the 20. He's in trouble and caught and knocked down by Danny Sanspree as he tried to go wide. Had he been able to get wide, there might have been some running room, and Rosenberg is a very dangerous returner. They might Shirer is wide to the right side. He's the only flanker. Uh, they have two tight ends. Here's the give. Fake. Johnson keeping rollout option. He's caught from behind as he turns the corner. Got a yard, maybe two, as Eddie Welsh got him at the 21 yard. Rosenberg, along with Mike Flynn, knock him down at the 21. He made a good fake that time as he had Shirer wide right. He faked the give. Second down and eight from the Georgia 21. Here's Andy Johnson with an eye backfield. Gives straight ahead to his fullback. He powers his way to the 25-yard line. Robert Honeycutt running very hard to the uh, 25. Tommy Year out is there. So is Eddie Welsh at the 25. It's third and uh, about four to go. Here's a come on to go to a power eye here on third down and four. Power eye formation. Three backs. Fake to the first back. Keeping it is Johnson. He's out very near a first down. And here's an Auburn man with a football, but they say, no, it was not a fumble. Coming out with the ball is Eddie Welsh, but they say no fumble. As Johnson carried it right up to about the 29, close enough that we may have a measurement. And, I, and no, they're going to say fourth down without a measurement. Now let's see if Johnson requests a measurement or not. They need about the 29 and a half. They don't have a full yard to go. Shirer is going to be standing on his own 13 to kick the ball. James Owens waiting near the Auburn 30. Here's a good snap to Shirer. He takes his time. No rush on. Kick is away. Fair catch is signaled and is taken by the upback Johnny Simmons. Johnny Simmons, fair catch on the 37. Slot formation left. The high backfield of Lowry and Henley. Here is Sullivan giving to the second man through. Henley, he's tripped. He's tripped on a nice play by Hurd as he gets out to about the 37, maybe the 38, a gain of one, perhaps two. Nice play by the defensive end Chuck Hurd, who was blocked out of the play, but got a hand down and tripped Henley. They give him no gain on the play. Second down and 10 to go. Second possession. Georgia's had the ball for only three plays in the game. Three plays and a punt. All right, Beasley is wide right. Smalls is left. Second down and 10 to go. And Pat Sullivan on a long count is straight back to throw. The rush is after him. He swings it out on the screen to Lowry. Lowry gets the block to the 40. 45 out to the Georgia, or the Auburn 47. Near a first down is Tommy Lowry. Great block by Larry Hill and Lorendo. Chip Wisdom, the linebacker, made the play. It is an Auburn first down. All right, uh, Smoltz and Beasley are both wide left. On first and 10, Sullivan from the eye gives to Henley up the middle. No, sir. They close the door on him right away. No gain, maybe a yard. Let's see when he unpile. There's a big linebacker. Kitchens is there. Watson and Bruce, the two tackles are there. And here's Wisdom right back in the game. Wisdom just came off, apparently, to talk to the coaches for a moment. Beasley and Smalls are wide left. High backfield. Sullivan 
back. This time to throw. He faked the run. Now he's going to throw up the middle. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. He was trying to go to Dick Small. Big Dennis Watson got his hand up and tipped that ball, I believe. Third down and nine. Third and nine now on the, on the Auburn 48. You know, Gary, the Georgia defense is leading the Southeastern Conference in total defense, and they're also leading the Southeastern Conference in rushing defense. Auburn, of course, is leading the Southeastern Conference in total offense. So you can see the best in the conference in offense against the best in the conference in defense. Robinette splits a few yards. Sullivan to throw on third and ten. Got time. He's away up the middle to Small. Complete to the Georgia 35 yard line. Dick Small's knocked down by Phil Sullivan. First and ten. Auburn under Georgia 35. And Auburn keeps it on first and ten. The slot is going to go right this time. Beasley wide. Small in the slot. And here's Sullivan faking to Henley. Sullivan's going to go very long for Beasley. He's there. Touchdown. Nothing. Golden. Poulos. But I believe it's the first time this year they have been behind in a game. All right, Andy Johnson has a slot formation left. First and ten from the 20. Give to Poulos on a delay. No gain. He uh, delayed just a moment, came up the middle, and John Hayworth hit him and knocked him down. Eddie Welsh was there to knock him down. And Benny Sibley. Welsh is from Columbus, Georgia. Six Wide right is Shirer. They put Poulos out on the wing now. And here it is Johnson for his first pass. Oh, it's a draw. Up the middle. 25, 30, 31. First down. Georgia. Quarterback draw as Andy Johnson is finally knocked down by Bill Luca and safety man Johnny Simmons. Georgia's first first down in the ball game. First and 10, Georgia on the 31. Clock shows 455 to play in the first quarter. The dogs with the ball. Johnson went back as though he were going to throw, had his arm up, but it was a quarterback draw all the way. Two tight ends, flanker out, here's Johnson keeping, on a top, turning up, 35, 40, 45, he's in the open, at the 40, 30, 25, he may go all the way, he's trying to catch him from behind, he is there, down on the two, all the way to the two-yard line, Andy Johnson, on the quarterback keep, he stepped up inside, got into secondary, and outran the Auburn defense, until Johnny Simmons, Got him at the two-yard line. It's first and goal to go, Georgia. Johnny Simmons knocked him down at the two. First and goal to go for the Georgia Bulldogs on the Auburn two. Great run by Andy Johnson. And now Georgia is going to take timeout. With timeout on the field, the score is Auburn 14 and Georgia nothing. 608 total yards for the season. A great run by Andy Johnson. Georgia's going to two tight ends now. Uh, Bryce and Green, they've got Lake, Kulos, and Honeycutt. Three backs in there in a power eye. First and goal at the two. And here is Johnson giving to Pulos. No, sir. No, sir. He's knocked down for no gain, maybe a loss. Pulos is hit in there by Tommy Yearout. Tommy Yearout, the Auburn defensive tackle, knocks him down. No gain, second and goal on the two. Power eye. This time the power back is over on the left side instead of the right. And Johnson gives the Pulos again. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia. Pulos from the two-yard line with 3.50. Left to play in the quarter. Has made it 14 to 6. And now Kim Braswell from Avondale, Georgia, 5'7", 170 junior, is in the kick. In the first quarter. A lot of explosiveness already in this quarter. Ball down. Left-footed kick is up. It's good. With time out on the field. The score is Auburn 14 and Georgia 7. For the Georgia Bulldogs, Steve White of West Point, Georgia will kick off. Terry Henley and James Owens are deep for Auburn. It's Auburn 14, Georgia 7. We still have 3.50 to go in the first quarter. 
very explosive football game. Andy Johnson is making a great run for the Dogs to set up their score. Here is the kick by White. It's going to go to James Owens. play in there by Dennis Watson, big senior from Avondale, Georgia, and getting up, pounding himself on the helmet was Jay Casey, as Casey was trying to take Watson out of the play, and Watson was able to get over him, reach Lowry, and knock him down, a two-yard gain to the 18-yard line, it's second down and eight for the Auburn game, all right, here's Henley moving over to a wing, a triple wing for Auburn, on second eight, Sullivan option, pitch to Lowry, Lowry turns up, 25, 27, first down Auburn. Lowry got a good block from Henley on the corner. Sullivan made the pitch, and it's first and ten. Steve Kitchens made the play. Tigers have first and ten on their own 28-yard line. That is the fifth first down, I believe, in a ball game. Gusty? That's the sixth first down, Gary. One thing Auburn's doing, they're putting Beasley and Smalls to the left, and Georgia is covering them, double covering Beasley, and putting another man over there to cover Smalls, and Pat is running the option play away where there's not as many football players to, to stop the option. Again, they put both men out to the left in the slot with Beasley wide, Smalls in the slot. Here's uh, Lowry coming up the middle, and uh, Wisdom's got him at the 30-yard line and drives him back. Tommy Lowry hit at the 30 and driven back by Chip Wisdom. He'll give his progress out across the 30, so that's going to be a gain of uh, two yards, second down and eight. Tommy Lowry on a little cross coming up. Beasley is right. And on second down and eight, let's see what Pat Sullivan does with the ball. He runs a little option, throws it now. Robinette, 40, 45, 48, Robbie Robinette down on the 48-yard line. Stop is made out there by Buzzy Rosenberg and by Steve Kitchens, the linebacker. First and 10, Auburn, ball on the Tiger, 48. As Sullivan started out as though he were running the split T option, stopped as he got down the line of scrimmage and dropped a quick pass off to Robbie Robinette. Harry Unger is now in the game, and Tommy Lowry is out. Unger from Fayette, Alabama, 6-2. 202 a junior on their own 48 slot formation left they shift the backfield to a pro set and here is Sullivan two under on a delay midfield Georgia 49 and down there gain of two maybe three for Harry Unger as he has slipped up inside stop was made by wisdom and by Steve Kitchens the two linebackers Beasley and Smoltz, wide to the left side. Pro set, behind Sullivan, he's back to throw. Sullivan waiting for the rush, the screen pass to Robinette. Robinette didn't get a block, and he knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Robinette did not get the block that he needed, and Don Golden, the safety man, was up there to knock him down. As uh, Georgia saw that screen coming, as a matter of fact, it's a loss of three, back to the original line of scrimmage, make it third down and 10. 13 seconds. Beasley is left, Smalls is right, here's Sullivan to throw on third down, Rush has got him, Rush has got him, he didn't see the man coming, back on the 37, Suck third, got to Pat Sullivan, knocked him down, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter, so your score, at the end of one quarter, the Auburn Tigers 14, the Georgia Bulldogs 7. All right, we're about ready for the start of the second quarter. Auburn will punt with the win on fourth down and 23 to go. The loss was back to the 36 as Sullivan was hit by Chuck Hurd from the line side. He did not see Hurd coming. Buzzy Rosenberg is deep as a safety for Georgia. There are two up backs in the uh, short position. Let's see what, Ro what uh, Roger Pruitt does. His kick is away. And, oh, it's a beauty. Very high, very long. Rosenberg caught it over the shoulders of the five, dropped it in the end zone. He's in some trouble now trying to get out. He's out to the one, and they knock him out of bounds on about the six-inch line. Georgia will have the ball on the six-inch line. Hold the phone. The penalty flag is down, and let's see what it's all about. While we find out about it's illegal procedure, Auburn, they're going to bring it back. The five-yard penalty moves it back to the th Auburn 31, and now on fourth and 28, here is uh, Beverly to kick again. Excuse me for saying through it. Here's Beverly with another nice kick, not quite as good. Rosenberg is going to catch it on the 21. He's in some trouble, and he is smashed at the 21, as three Auburn people were down there. Unger was there. The guard was there, uh, Trace Rogers. And the third man going off is Dick Smalls. All right, here's a slot formation left. Andy Johnson, the quarterback. No, James Ray is in. And here's Pulos hit and caught for a loss by Sibley. Check that to make sure it is Benny Sibley. I think it is on the bottom of the pile. Yes. Youngster from Bluntsville has just knocked down Jimmy Pulos for a minus one yard on the carry. 
And we may have a flag over there. Gusty? That's a great play by Sibley. He's playing against two All-Americans, Roy Smith, the right guard, and Tom Nash, the right tackle. Both of them over 235 pounds. And he crashed through a double team to stop Poulos on that play. Nothing. with James Ray in the game. He rolled back as though he were going to throw. Left the ball with Pulos, the running back, and he got all the way out. They finally rolled him out of the 49 as Mike Neal made the play as Georgia has now made another fine run. Jimmy Pulos from Atlanta, Georgia. 5-11-178 sophomore. It was Andy Johnson who made a big run to set up a first touchdown. Here's Georgia with Pulos again coming inside, and this time he got a yard, maybe two. Bob Brown is there on top of him for one. Tommy Yearout is on the bottom of the pile. And also in there, defensively, is uh, the tackle on the other side, Benny Sibley. They're going to give Pulos credit for uh, two yards down to the Auburn 49, second down and eight. Side, two tight ends and an eye backfield. Two running backs behind James Ray. He's giving, you know, he's back to throw. Ray on a good fake, throws it. It's complete at the 38, hit very hard and knocked down by uh, Langer. Is the big tight end, Mike Green, but he ha held on to the ball at the 38 yard line, first and 10, Georgia. James Ray made a beautiful fake that time to Pulos. A beautiful fake to Pulos. And Pulos now is coming out of the game. His shoulder pad uh, is loose due to the jersey uh, being ripped off, and Ricky Lake is going to come in to replace Pulos. From Columbia, South Carolina at quarterback. He has a slot formation wide to the right side. Going to give quickly to the Honeycutt, the big fullback, straight ahead. He's over to 35 to the Auburn 34 yard line. Honeycutt running very heavy up the middle. Luca is there. Hayworth is there to make the play defensively for Auburn. Wide out to the right. Georgia second and six. Here he is to give the second back through and a big running room for Lake. He's over to 25, 23 yard line. Run by Ricky Lake. Now he gets up slowly. I believe he hurt his knee. He's had an injury problem and he's going to limp off. And Pulos is back in to replace him. But it is the Georgia first down. And 10 on the Auburn 24 yard line. Slot right again as James Ray gives to Honeycutt over the 20 down to the 18. He just ran through two or three tackles till finally Mike Flynn and uh, Mike Neal got him at the 18 yard line. Good heavy running again by Robert Honeycutt. Now Honeycutt gets up a little bit slowly, but I believe he's all right. That is a gain of six yards, second and four for Georgia. James Ray, 6'3", 185 junior from Columbia, South Carolina, now quarterbacking after Andy Johnson had let him do a touchdown. Here's a uh, slot right, and give him the second back through, and that is Pulos twisting his way to the 15. Who's hit at the 17, twisted on down to the 15. Danny Sandsbury is there to make the play. And uh, linebacker Mike Neal. Here's a power eye on third down and one with two tight ends. And he gave it to the second back, Pulos, and he's got his first down, I believe. He's over the 15 to about the 14 or 13. Looks like enough from here if they give him the 13-yard line. And they will. First and 10, Georgia. Neal made the play defensively for Auburn. Mike Neal, first man there. 10.52 remaining. Shirer, Honeycutt and Shirer are both going wide right. First and 10 on the Auburn 13-yard line for Georgia. And this is uh, James Ray rolling on a quarterback keep. He's going wide at the 10 and is knocked down at the 10-yard line. Now a flag is going to go down for piling on. Dave Beck made the play, and they're going to drop a flag saying that uh, Luca came in there late. Dave Beck made the play at the 9. That's going to be a half-the-distance penalty as they dropped a late hit on Luca. And Coach Paul Davis and Coach Shook Jordan not too happy about it as the official comes over. And a power eye. They have three backs in there. And it's uh, Pulos, the deep back, likely to get the ball. And here is Pulo. No, he kept it. He pitched back at the last minute. Touchdown, Georgia. What a good fake, Donnie Allen. Donnie Allen got the score as James Ray made two good fakes. First, he gave it to Pulos and brought it back when Pulos got in trouble. He held on to the ball, started to run it himself. Then when he got in trouble, he pitched it back to Donnie Allen. And now it's 14 to 13 as Georgia has just scored on a run by Allen from the four and a half yard line. A 
little triple option here from the power eye. And here's the point after it's coming. Braswell will kick, and holding will be James Ray, the quarterback. So Kim Braswell will try to tie this game up with 10-11 left in the first half. The snap, kick is down, the kick is good. The timeout, the score is Auburn 14, Georgia 14. Well, their All-American candidate Roy Smith was down on that play. Now he's going to get up and run off, and that's the hand you hear. Roy Smith, the offensive guard, had a quarter. Steve White, ready to kick. Henley and Owens are deep for Auburn, and here we go. His kick is high and down the middle, rather short. James Owens catches 22, 25, 30, 35, and caught knocked out at the 35 is James Owens. James Owens was knocked out over there for the Georgia Bulldogs by Jim MacArthur, and along with MacArthur was Dick Kahn. So at the 35, it's first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. High game 14, 14 Auburn moving with the wind at their back here in the second quarter. Glenn Gordon is now in there at tackle. Offensively, and let's see. Mac Lorendo is out. Here is uh, Beasley and Small to the slot right. Unger is in there with Lowry, and Unger's coming up the middle. Spun off a tackle. 40 out to the 43. Great run by Unger. Harry Unger was hit at the line of scrimmage. He came off that tackle, forced his way out. They ruled his knee down on a 41. At the six-yard gain, he should have had two. Mixon Robinson made the play. A fine run there by Unger. Henley is out of the game. Unger is the tailback. Lowry is the fullback. Smaltz and Beasley are the wide receivers. Rodgers and Hill, the guards, and Spiker, the other tackle. Wide outs either side this time. On second down, here's Sullivan to throw. Rush after him. He got it away. Incomplete for Robin S. Sullivan was hit as he threw the ball by Mixon Robinson. Robinson got his arm a little bit and caused Sullivan to throw it just slightly behind Robinette. However, it was uh, within the reach of Robinette, but he could not hang on to the ball. Uh, the first play of the second quarter, Georgia drove it for a touchdown. Now here's third and four, a possession down. Beasley is right. Sullivan to throw. He's got time. He's going up the middle to Beasley. Complete at the 45 of Georgia. Terry Beasley knocked down on a 45 as he hooked right into the middle. He was knocked down by Mixon Robinson, believe it or not. The defensive end who was downfield, along with the safety man, Don Golden. First and 10 Auburn on the Georgia 45 as on third and four, Sullivan goes to Terry Beasley. Who else? 9-10 left in the... Wide outs to either side on first and ten. High backfield. Sullivan gives to Unger up the middle. He's tripped as he turns over the 43 down to the 41-yard line. Unger to the 41. Dennis Watson tripped him. Milton Bruce was there to pin him. That is a gain of four. Second down and six. Tulane leading Notre Dame. Seven nothing at the half. Here's Beasley. Wide right. Wide left is Smalls. Second and six. Here's a give to Unger again, and he could run again. He got over a pile, got down near his first down to about the 36-yard line. Unger had trouble at about the 39. He jumped over a couple of tacklers and got down to the 36 before Wisdom knocked him down. It's going to be third down and one. So it's third and one for the Auburn Tigers. Another possession down, a ball on the Georgia 36. Uh, Auburn has uh, slot formation left. Smalls and Beasley. Here's Sullivan giving to Unger again, and he's got his first down as he's down to about the Georgia 33. First and 10 Auburn on the Georgia 33-yard line as Unger ran the ball very well again in heavy traffic. Chuck Hurd, the defensive end, was there. Clock shows 7.33 left and a half. First and 10 Auburn, wide out to either side. High backfield, here's Sullivan running the option. Sullivan picks it up, fumbles, Georgia ball.
out to either side. First and 10, Auburn on the 20. Here's Sullivan to Unger. Unger to the 15 and knocked out at the 15-yard line. He got a good hole on the left side of the offensive line. Spigner, Robinette, and uh, Hill over there. Moves some people out. Or let's make that Casey on that side. Moves some people out. Mixon, Robinson, and Chip Wisdom made the play. Can't quite get to the nine for the first. Slot formation right for Auburn. Second down, and here is Pat Sullivan. A long count, faking to Unger. Sullivan is throwing in a corner. Incomplete for Beasley. Beasley tried to hook and come back and couldn't get a hold of the ball near the Georgia 10-yard line. Incomplete pass. Fuzzy Rosenberg was covering Terry Beasley on that play. So it'll be third down and five and a half. And here is Terry Henley in and uh, Unger going out. Henley in. Smaltz is wide right. Here goes Henley over to the wing. On third down, here is Sullivan rolling to throw. The rush is after him. He threw it while he was hit. He has a man. Touchdown! Six balls in the corner of the end zone. And for the second time, Pat Sullivan threw the ball while he was on the way down. And Dick Smaltz made a great leaping catch in the corner of the end zone. Chuck Hurd was the man again putting the rush on Sullivan. And he had him on the way down when he threw the ball. That is the second time today that Sullivan has completed crucial passes while he was on the way to the ground. All right, here's the point after. Dave Beck will hold. Gardner Jet will kick. We have 6.20 left in the first half. It's 20-14. to 14. Auburn leads. The ball is snapped. It's down. It's up. It's good with timeout on the field. The score is Auburn 21, Georgia 14. 6.20 left in the first half. Roger Pruitt will be kicking off. Auburn band will be on at halftime. They're moving into position now. And moving on to football is Pruitt. Here is his kick. And let's see, this one is going to go to Poulos back on the two-yard line. Poulos is out to the 10, to the 15. At the 20, he's trying to go wide. He broke one tackle at the 19-21-yard line. Bruce Biles got him. He retreated to the 19 and got away from one man who was chasing him out there. That was uh, Miles Jones. But when he tried to turn it to 20, Bruce Biles, the senior from Montgomery, knocked him down on the 21-yard line. And Andy Johnson will be in at quarterback as the Dogs take over first and 10 on their own 21. Well, to say this has not been a defensive struggle would be an understatement. It's 21 to 14. We have score was tied, and now it's 21-14. Tigers on top. Georgia with two wideouts left. Give on a delay to Pulos, and year out and Sidley have got Pulos in the backfield for a loss back on about the 18. Marked the ball on the 19. Series started on the 21. That's minus two. It's second play on both their parts. All right, here's a slot formation right, second and 12. And a give is going to be to the fullback, Honeycutt. He's back over the 20, 21, maybe the 22-yard line when they unpile. Uh, big Danny Sandsbury is over there on the far side. And on a play, John Hayworth came up and made the play. Sandsbury from Atmore, Alabama, 6'4", 221 junior is in there. And let's see, there's one wide out, two tight ends. And here is the quarterback, Johnson, rolling out on his run-pass option. He's going to run with it as he turns up, 25, out to the 30, kept his feet, 35, and down to the 40-yard line. A great run by Andy Johnson, and he was in danger of losing yardage. He had a great chance of getting tackled in the backfield, but made a super move, and this boy can really run the football. It's down on the 39, first and 10, Georgia. I'm not sure if Johnson ever had much idea of throwing. He had his arm up to try to keep the defense honest, but uh, he tucked it down pretty quick, put the ball down and ran with it, and was finally knocked down on the 39 where it's first and 10, Georgia. Slot formation right for the dogs. Here Johnson delayed a pull out. No, he faked it. Throwing back on a screen. Complete to the tight end. Back on the 30, 35, 40, 45, and knocked down on the 48 yard line. That is the big uh, tight end over there, Billy Bryce. And he's going to be all the way out to the Georgia 48 yard line where it will be second down and one. Great fake to Pulos inside, and Johnson then threw back to the weak side to complete to his tight end who got out to the 48-yard line. Gusty? No. I thought uh, somebody tapped me. I thought Gusty had a comment. Here we go with second down and short. This is Pulos over midfield. Down to the Auburn 45. First and 10, Georgia, on the Auburn 45-yard line. Pulos getting the first down. That is eight first downs for the Dogs. 348 remaining. Stop is made by Dave Beck, the cornerback. And here is Chastain in and Luca out at linebacker. Rick Chastain has come in, replacing sophomore Bill Luca. First and 10 on the Auburn 45 yard line. George is going to put Shira and Honeycutt both wide on the left side. 
And here is uh, Johnson giving it inside to Honeycutt. He got a two, maybe three yards down to about the 41-yard line. Here is Gilchrist now going to come in the ball game, and Dave Beck is going out. Ball is down on the Auburn 41. That is a gain of four, second down and six. Uh, their Honeycutt very wide left. Shirer is in the slot. Here is a give to Pulos again on the cross, and he got a yard, and that's about all. Nice play made by Hayward on the defensive play. John Hayward made a fine defensive play on the 39-yard line. That is a gain of only one, and it will be third down now, and four, four and a half to go. Clock a factor, 240. Here's another third down for Georgia. Honeycutt is wide. They have a wing back in there on the same side as Honeycutt. And Johnson is going to keep it, run the option short side. He's knocked down, did not make his first down. He's down at about the 37. Tommy Yearout got him, Danny Sandsbury there. And Hayworth was in on the play once again. So was Sibley. Ball on the 37, it's fourth and two. And with just uh, two minutes, 11 seconds left and a half, let's see what Vince Dooley is going to do. Vince Dooley has sent Donnie Allen into the game. Shirer, who is the punter, has come out. So they're not going to punt on fourth and two. George is going to go for it here with a minute and 55 to play, and you can't blame him. All on the 37, fourth and two. Andy Johnson, power eye, two tight ends. He is rolling the throw. Now he's going to keep it. He turned up. He is close. I don't think so. I don't know. We're right on that 35-yard line, and he's very close. It will all depend on where the linesman spots it. They will have to measure, and it's going to be so very, very, very close. They unpile. Here come the chains. The players are all in our way. We can't see very well where the ball is. The back end of the ball is touching the 35-yard line. This is a fourth down. The players are in there now. We can't possibly see it. Auburn is held. Auburn's football, first and ten. On a Georgia 35. I could. But right now, let's tell you, that's the end of the first half. Your halftime score, the Auburn Tigers 21 and the Georgia Bulldogs 14. Once again, this is Gary Sanders at Athens, Georgia, Sanford Stadium, along with uh, Gusty Yearout, our spotters, Bill Wingard and Kess Fabian. And, of course, uh, the halftime show is underway. The Auburn band is on the field. And, as usual, to take over for the halftime, here once again is the former two-time Auburn captain, Gusty Yearout. Thank you, Gary. I want to run over the first half unofficial statistics. First and first downs, Auburn had 11 and the University of Georgia had 8. Pat Sullivan attempted 12 passes for Auburn, completing 9. Georgia attempted two passes, completing both of those passes. There were no passes intercepted in the first half. Auburn punted the ball two times for a 50-yard average, and Georgia punted the ball once. There were two penalties called against Auburn for 10 yards, and two penalties called against the University of Georgia, one for five yards and one for pass interference. To rehash the scoring plays for a moment, with 10.35 left in the first quarter. On the first possession of downs for Auburn, Tommy Lowry ran the ball over from, from the one-yard line, put Auburn ahead 6 to nothing. Gardner Jett came in and kicked the extra point, and Auburn led 7 to nothing. With 5 minutes and 46 seconds left on the second possession of downs, Pat Sullivan threw a 31-yard bomb to Terry Beasley to put Auburn ahead 13 to nothing, and with the point after being good, it was 14 to nothing. Well, Georgia wasn't going to stand still and let Auburn score all these points on without doing anything. And with 3.50 left in the first quarter, Jimmy Poulos came back and ran the ball over from the three-yard line to put Georgia on the scoreboard with six points, and the point after touchdown was good. Auburn led 14 to 7. We went into the second quarter, and with 10 minutes and 11 seconds left, Don Allen, after a fine Georgia drive, went in from the four-yard line, and the score was 14 to 13, 14 14 after the point after. Auburn took the ball again, but with six minutes and 20 seconds left, Pat Sullivan threw a beautiful pass to Terry, pardon me, Sullivan threw the ball to Dick Small, a 15-yard pass, put Auburn ahead 20 to 14, and with a point after being good, the score was 21 to 14, and that's the way the half ended. On that last score, Sullivan was hit as he threw the ball, and it was a fine play on the part of Small and Sullivan. Now Auburn leads 21 to 14 at halftime. The Auburn Tigers are back, and you're going to hear the Bulldogs come on. Georgia now getting ready to come on. Both the Auburn and the Georgia fans performed here at halftime. And so uh, band managers and what have you are cleaning up some of the paraphernalia, the bandstands and the uh, props and what have you were using the halftime show. They're just getting them out of the way in time. And here come the dogs back out. They're in red and white.
White, we mentioned it before, Auburn in the white uniforms today. Pat Sutherland and Tommy, you're out. Captains will be coming. Retreating now, taking on the 15, and he slipped and fell down. Nobody was with him. He slipped and fell down. The crowd is up because Larry Hill came on top of him. Georgia will take over on the first and, first and ten on their own 15 with timeout on the field. The score is Auburn 21, Georgia 14. His first down play, and Poulos breaks right up the middle, gets out over the 25, out to the 26, and quickly Georgia gets a first down on the handoff as Jimmy Poulos from Atlanta had plenty of running room up the middle. He got it all the way out to the 27. That's a gain of 11, first and 10, Georgia, on their own 27-yard line. They started on the 16. Here's Johnson giving inside to Honeycutt, and he's knocked down at the 29, maybe the 30. As Honeycutt got the ball, John Hayworth was there to hit him for Auburn, and along with Hayworth was Bob Brown, the defensive end. That's a gain of two yards out from the 28 uh, to the 30. Calling, picking up a first down on the first snap as Pulos found running room right up the middle. All right, here's a wing to the right. And here is the fake to Pulos. Back to throw is Johnson. He is throwing. He is going long. He is intercepted by Johnny Simmons. Simmons intercepted. And drops, dips out of bounds on the 41-yard line. I see the intended receiver, I believe, was Lynn Honeycutt. No, it was Mike Green, the tight end. Green, the tight end, was down there, and Simmons jumped in the air in front of him, took the ball, and stepped out of bounds as he caught it. The ball is midway between the Auburn 40 and 41. We'll call it the 40 for the sake of argument. First and 10, Auburn on their own 40-yard line is John Auburn. Pat Sullivan has Henley in, uh, he has uh, Unger in there. Here's Lowry, quick opener, midfield, all the way down to the Georgia 46-yard line. That popped in there, and before I could find a football, Lowry was running in the secondary. Sullivan gave it to uh, Lowry, and Dan, Dan Golden, the safety, finally got him. McManus, Casey, and Spigner really moved out that Georgia defensive line that time. Slot formation well. High backfield, under the deep back, Lowry up close. Sullivan is rolling on a quarterback keep, trying to get a block on the corner, and he tripped and fell at the 45-yard line. That's a gain of two, second down, and, or three, second down and seven. Unger trying to make a block out there in front. Let's pause now. Ten seconds for station identification. This is the Auburn Football Network. This is WAAX, Gadsden, Alabama, 570 on your dial. The time, it's 28 minutes, 30 seconds. All right, here's second down and seven for Auburn on a Georgia 45. Series started on the 48. Beasley is wide right, Smalls left, Sullivan throwing, Sullivan is away for Smalls, it is incomplete, as Dick Smalls could not get to it at the sidelines of the Georgia 34. He tried to run a little hook pattern to the sidelines, could not get to it, Phil Sullivan was there covering, and Chuck Hurd was rushing, he forced Sullivan to throw it a little bit earlier than he really wanted to. Now, and eight to go for Auburn, a third and seven, let's make it Auburn, on the Georgia 45. Here's a possession down, Sullivan wanting to throw, he's got it away, he's complete and out of bounds. On a catch to Dick Smalt, first and ten, Auburn on Georgia 35. Same play over again, this time they got it too small, so he's caught it and stepped out of bounds. Uh, once again, Sullivan, Phil Sullivan was there covering. 14 first downs for Auburn in the ball game, as they have the ball on Georgia 35 now, first and ten to go. Beasley wide right, Smaltz in the right slot. Here's the first and ten, and here's Lowry straight in the middle. He got one, two, maybe three at the most. Not much running room for Tommy Lowry that time. Lots of uh, Georgia people, Mixon Robinson, Dennis Watson, Milton Bruce, all around the football. Paul McPippen was in there also. And so that's a gain of two, let's make it. Auburn 21, Georgia 14. Beasley is wide right. Here is Sullivan, delay to Lowry. Lowry, 30, 25, 20, down to the 17-yard line is Tommy Lowry. As running room opened up on a de delay, not a full draw, but a semi-draw to Tommy Lowry. Got to the 17, first and 10, Auburn, Golden, and Jackson finally made the play for the Georgia Bulldogs. First and 10, Auburn. Gusty? Gary, you just can't say enough about how what a, a great game Sullivan is calling. He's running his draw play, as you just said. He's running his screen and then he drops back to pass and he's keeping this Georgia defense off balance. They don't know what to do right now. First and 10 Auburn on a Georgia 17. Beasley right, small left. Pro set backfield. Matt Sullivan. Going to give it to Lowry. Coming up the middle, 15, 14, 13, 12. Tommy Lowry going right up the middle. Got down to about the 12-yard line. Was finally hit there by Milton Bruce, the big tackle from Avondale, Georgia. And let's see if they give him the 12 or the 11. Looks like the ball's closer to the 11-yard line. And so that would be a six-yard gain, second down and four. 
Here is uh, Lowry out of the game. We have Unger and Henley in there as running backs. Swinford is in the game, replacing Jerome Jackson for Georgia. So it's second and four, Auburn. The ball on the Georgia 11-yard line. Here's Beasley again wide right, small left. High backfield this time. And Sullivan goes to Unger, and he's over the 10 to about the 9. He's going to be two in Georgia, 6'5", 220, and a senior. And uh, they're going to actually mark him a little short of the 9-yard line in the third quarter. Here's third down. Wide out to either side, the high backfield. Let's see what Sullivan will come up with. He's going to roll the throw. He's stopping. It's knocked down. Incomplete. Dick Lyman got his hand on the ball. And that was Mixon Robinson, I believe, who got his hand up and knocked it down. He was going for Terry Beasley. And now on fourth down, Gardner Jett will attempt a field goal for Auburn. So Georgia holding on their own 10-yard line. Just Dave Beck will kneel there. A 27-yard field goal if good. Dave Beck will kick, uh, will hold, Gardner Jett will kick, a 27-yard attempt. The ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is no good. It's wide to the right. Kick is no good. The timeout on the field, the score is Auburn 21, Georgia 14. If you And here is again, straight ahead to Pulos, and he got two, maybe three, as he came right up the middle. Tommy Year out, Bill uh, Luca all there, Mike Neal. They're going to give him the 24-yard line, a gain of four, second and six. Well, uh, the kick by Gardner Jett was plenty long enough, but it was wide to the right, according to the officials, who uh, were on uh, down under the goalpost. The ruling was it was wide right and no good. Hash mark and missed it wide right. So Auburn gets nothing out of the drive. It's 21-14. Here comes the option. And Johnson stumbled forward as he turned inside. Got all the way out to about the 30. Enough for a first down, I believe, as he really was not tackled. Now they're going to mark him just shy. Third and about two inches. They're between the 29 and the 30. All right. Two tight ends and a quarterback sneak. And he, I think, got it as Hayworth met him. John Hayworth met him, but he got across the 30-yard stripe by the length of the football, and that's all. First and 10, Georgia. First and 10, Georgia. 35 points scored, I should say, by the two teams. So far, this has been scoreless. Auburn just missing a field goal attempt. Here's Johnson. Option. Pitch back to Pulos. Flynn is chasing him. Missed him, but he was caught back here by Dave Beck. Back on about the 28. Flynn missed him at about the 25. But Dave Beck came up and got him. Well, they're going to mark him on the 29, so that's minus one, second and 11. Split T option that time, and a defensive end on that side, Sam Spree, you know, Welsh, Jimmy Poulos. I wanted to say Roger Poulos for some reason. There's a wide out left on second and 11, and here is Johnson back to throw. He's got it away. He's incomplete. It was tipped. It was intended for the tight end. Once again, Mike Green. Simmons was coming up to cover, and Langner took a shot at the ball after it was tipped, tried to dive for it, and could not get to it. So it's going to be third down and 11. Both teams have moved the ball well, but the only scoring attempt on this field goal. Here's third and 11 now. Georgia possession down, wide outs either side. Johnson straight back to throw, rushes after him. He got it away on the screen to Poulos, and Poulos is hit by Flynn for a loss. Nice play by Mike Flynn. Then Welsh and Neal got over there, and he lost another yard back to the 28. It'll be fourth and 12. And Gusty, I would say that Flynn played that screen pass about as well as you could. Well, he sure did, and Flynn wasn't going to let Poulos get away that time. Uh, Poulos stiff on him on two or three plays before that and got away, and I know Mike was disappointed. That time he came up, put the helmet right in the middle of Poulos' chest and wrapped his arms around him, and there wasn't the one way for Poulos to go, and that was down. Fourth and 12, and Jimmy Shirer of Ellery, South Carolina, is in punt formation. James Owens is deep for Auburn. Clock running at 440 in the third quarter. Kicking into the wind. Here is Shirer, a high, rather short kick that uh, Owens is catching on the 30. Owens is back to the 35. He fumbled the ball. Let's see, right in front of the Georgia bench, who got it? We can't see. The players are in our way. Who got the ball? Now a fight is broken out down there. A little fist of cuffs is broken out between two or three of the players. I believe Auburn got the ball back. Let's see. It all happened in front of the Georgia bench, and the players had us completely blocked. James Owens dropped the ball, a 41-yard kick, and Auburn has the football, as I believe Mike Flynn recovered it for Auburn. We'll have to give Flynn credit on a guess, and I also will guess it's Simmons. One of those two got the ball, but I say the players all standing up right at the sidelines. We
we had no idea not only which team had it, but certainly uh, no idea which individual had it. So after Quinn or Simmons recovers for Auburn, first and ten Tigers, and here is Sullivan giving to Unger over the 40, out to the 42. Jerry starting on the 38, and Unger gets four yards, second down and six. Unger is knocked down by Milton Bruce and Steve Kitchen. Matt Sullivan on second and six. See what he does with it. He's going to give the Lowry straight ahead. He's got his some running room. He may have his first down. He's over the 45, depending on where they mark him down. 47-yard line. Looks like he'll be one yard shy. Third and one. Quick opener that time for Tommy Lowry. He hit right up the middle. Don Golden, the safety man from Valdosta, Georgia, made the play. And Chip Wisdom was there also. Along the sidelines, I see James Ray throwing the football back and forth. See what Sullivan calls. He's going to go to Unger. Unger slipped off one tackle, fought his way. I don't know. That's going to depend on where the official spotted as to whether or not he made it or not. It's very close. Unger slipped off one tackler, and then Wisdom knocked him down. And are they going to call for the chains or not? They're going to put it over there where the linesman has his foot down. They say, no, he didn't make it. Fourth down. All right. Now, the official says, no, I want to measure it. Line of scrimmage is the Auburn 47. They needed the 48 for the first down. And David Beverly of Sweetwater, Alabama is back to kick. Looks like Georgia may be putting a rush on this time. Well, now wait, they loosen up a little bit as Auburn shifts into punt formation. Here's the snap. Beverly's got his kick away. It's a beautiful high kick. Rosenberg's got his hand up for a fair catch. Going to hit it to three. Went into the end zone for a touchback. With timeout on the field, the score is Auburn 21 and Georgia 14. Peace of mind. That certain knowledge that you have. All right, here's the first down play. Johnson keeping the ball for Georgia. 25, 30, 33, 4. And down on the 35, Andy Johnson kept the ball. Dave Beck had to get him. He made a good fake to pull us inside and kept the ball. And Georgia has started with the ball in this third quarter, getting big yardage on their first play after the uh, exchange of the ball. After the field goal, they went, the field goal attempt was missed. They went 12 yards in the first play. This time, Johnson goes 15 on the first play, out to the 35. Andy Johnson keeping the quarterback option and running very quickly and very well. Two wideouts left. Here is the fake give to the fullback, Honeycutt, and Bob Brown has a hold of him. He fights his way forward for a yard or two. Brown is there to hit him, and Tommy Year out pursuing the play. They're going to give him uh, three yards on the play, all the way out to the 38, second down and seven. Team the triple option that you've heard about so many times. Minute 28 left in the quarter. Here is second down and seven to go now. And this time the fake to Pulos back to throw. Johnson rolling out. He's going to run with it. He turns up to the 45 and is hit and knocked down on a 46-yard line. That is enough, I believe, for a first down. Enough, I believe, for a first down. A very excellent running back, Andy Johnson. Benny Sibley knocked him down. First and 10, Georgia. Ball on their own, 46-yard line, first and 10. Here's a wing formation right. Johnson is going to give inside to Pulos, and he's out near midfield before he's knocked down. Four-yard gain by Jimmy Pulos. Replay, uh, knocking him down, Luca, Sandspree, and Neal. Clock running with 36 seconds left in a quarter. About to run out of time on this quarter. 21 to 14, Auburn leads by one touchdown and one extra point. And all all right, the wideouts are going right. A slot formation with Honeycutt and Shiver out there. And here is Johnson keeping this time and not getting much. Maybe a yard, as I think uh, Sibley got a hold of him. Yes, indeed. Sibley and Yearout both got a hold of him as he faked to his fullback and then kept it. And he's going to be marked on the Auburn 49-yard line where it's third down and about five to go. And the clock has just run out. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is Auburn 21 and Georgia 14. Third and five. Slot formation to the right. A possession down on the first play of the quarter for Georgia. Johnson is back to throw. He is throwing very long. He has a man down there and he overthrew him incomplete at the 10-yard line. The big tight end, Mike Green, was open at the 10, but Johnson overthrew him. David Langner, the closest defender, but Green was open. And it will be fourth down and five to go now for Georgia. Before Sandsbury hit him. Now Simmons is going deep, and Auburn is loading up on the kick, it looks like. As Shira is in front formation, there are nine men on the eight line of scrimmage. Now eight. Rush after it. He got the kick away. It's high and rather short. 
Fair catch Simmons, and he takes it and falls down on the 21-yard line, and Auburn will take over there first and 10, as Johnny Simmons made the fair catch. The ball rather short. We didn't give credit a minute ago. We had a 54-yard punt a minute ago by Beverly. This is a 27-yard punt by Shiver. The Auburn fans in the end zone, and uh, over on the far sideline are up now, trying to get the Auburn offense stirred. First and 10. With the football, Pat Sullivan takes it, gives to Lowry, fumble! Recovered by Georgia! That ball was hit straight up in the air. It was recovered by the linebacker, Steve Kitchen. I don't know who hit Tommy Lowry, but that ball went 10 feet in the air and came across the pile where Kitchens was able to recover. He has first and 10 Georgia on the Auburn 26-yard line. up in the air. All right, Andy Johnson, the quarterback. First and 10, Georgia. Johnson rolling out. Quarterback Keith, he is hit and knocked down at 25. As he tried to roll on a quarterback sweep, Sibley is over there. Sandsbury is there. Neal is there. Give him one yard on the play, second and nine. Field position, quite different, however. Georgia getting it deep in Auburn territory. Here is Johnson giving to Poulos up the middle. He is hit by Luca and written down at about the 22. Poulos and Luca collided head on at the 22 yard line. And that is going to bring up third down from the 22 and six yards to go. This is a very crucial play. Third down and six. Auburn 21, Georgia 14. The Dolphins 22 yard line with third and six. Johnson keeping it, turning up, got a broken tackle, got to the 20, not down on the 19. He's shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down and about four. They mark him at the 20, fourth and four. Great play by John Hayworth and Tommy Year out on fourth and four. Here comes Braswell, the field goal kicker for Georgia. Braswell from Avondale, Georgia. The field goal kicker is in to attempt a field goal. Braswell is a left-footed kicker. Ball is being spotted on the 26-yard line. It'll be 36 yards of good. 12.55 left. Delay of game, Georgia. Flag goes down. Georgia took too long. Left-footed uh, Kim Braswell, 5'7", 170. Andy Johnson to hold. The snap is good. It's down. I think it may have been touched. It's going to be short and no good. I think Auburn got a piece of it, and Braswell is knocked down. So, with timeout on the field, the score... Hold it, there's a penalty flag down, and they wait, whoa, hold it, they're going to call roughing the field goal kicker, I believe. Let's see what the flag is, no, it couldn't, it's not from the referee, the flag is down from a man out on the sidelines, so it's not going to be roughing the kicker, I don't believe, Braswell was hit very hard, but let's see what the penalty is going to be. Line of scrimmage at 25, a roughing would be 15 yards. They're going to go half the distance. That's what they're calling, and the man who called it was way out on the sidelines. The referee did not call roughing the kicker. It's going to give Georgia first down, personal foul. Georgia first and 10 on the Auburn 13 as the dogs get another break. Here's Johnson keeping the ball, turning up and knocked down on the 11-yard line. Andy Johnson stopped by Sibley and Flynn. Well, Auburn getting two bad breaks in a row now. They had to fumble, and now they get a roughing the kicker call from way out on the sideline. And the referee normally throws roughing the kicker. He's standing right there behind the kicker. Here's Johnson giving to Poulos. Five, three, two, one. Poulos is all the way down to the one-yard line. First and goal to go, Georgia. Well, the Auburn defense obviously disheartened. As Poulos came right up the middle, it's going to be first and goal. Where are they going to put it? On a one or the two? About the one and a half yard line. Boy, you talk about a costly penalty. Georgia had, you can imagine, roughing the field goal kicker. All right, here is uh, Johnson, quarterback sneak. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia. Andy Johnson goes in on a quarterback sneak. It's 21 to 20, and Braswell will try to add the point after it. 21 to 20, and now Kim Braswell is the man in the spotlight as he attempts to add the point after touchdown. 11.46 remaining in the football game. Auburn 21, Georgia 21 right now. And let's see what will happen here. As Johnson will hold and Braswell will attempt to kick. On a 
point after. And he is a very accurate point after kicker, I might add. Here's the snap, a little bit high. He's got it down. It's blocked. It's blocked. Blocked for Auburn by Roger Taylor. The point after is blocked. The timeout on the field. The score is Auburn 21, Georgia 20. How many times in the last 90 days have you needed extra money? I said Roger Taylor. I meant to say Roger Mitchell. Young man from Eufaula, 5'10", 170 sophomore. Roger Mitchell has just blocked Braswell's point after attempt. And Auburn leads 21 to 20 with 11.46 left in the game. Georgia Steve White will kick off. And here we go. Henley and James Owens are deep. Auburn has several people up. for the possible onside, but the kick is going to be one of those kicks that uh, Owens catches on a 10, 15, 20, 25, and out to about the 28 is James Owens. James Owens out to about the 28 or 9 yard line. On the bottom of the pile is Steve Sleek for Georgia making the play, and Auburn will take over first and 10. Well, they're going to mark him out on the 30. So Auburn on the 30 yard line, leading 21 to 20. And uh, I knew exactly who I was talking about when I said Roger Taylor, but I meant Roger Mitchell. Non-scholarship team trying to block kicks, and he got that all-important extra point that time. Now here's Sullivan, first and ten. He's going to fake the under. He's going to throw the ball against the green. Complete. Beasley broke away. 45, 50, 40. He's going down the sideline. They're not going to catch Terry Beasley. It's an over touchdown. Terry Beasley has just gone for a touchdown. On a 70-yard touchdown pass. Pat Sullivan to Terry Beasley. Beasley was with two defenders, and he broke away. The minute he had a step, you could say goodbye, because they're not going to catch. Touchdown. That makes it 27 to 20, and here comes the Auburn point after. He had two men with him, and I think they both went for the football instead of going for Beasley. And the minute he had a step, it was all over because you're not going to catch him. I don't care who you are, Buzzy Rosenberg included, and Beasley has just run it 70 yards for a score. Here's the point after. Very important. Snap, down, kick up. It's good. With timeout on the field, the score is Auburn 28 and Georgia 20. Isn't there something really special you'd like to have? Now, here is Andy Johnson at quarterback, first and ten for the dogs. He's going to keep it himself, go up the middle, 25, 28, and 29 yard line. Johnson knocked down by Bob Brown and John Hayward. And let's see, somebody's on the bottom of that pile. On the 70, on the 30, the 70, holy smoke. Am I excited? Second and three, here comes Johnson, pitch back to the trailing back, Shira. Shira, 35, 40, and out of bounds. At about the 41, they brought the flanker around. They brought Shira, the flanker, around as the trailing back that time on the option. And when Andy Johnson got into trouble, he pitched it back. Mike Neal knocked him out of bounds along with Beck. It was the linebacker, Flynn, however, that forced him to make the pitch. Well, I heard a great joke about a man going to the 50, 60, the 70, but I never thought I would say it on a broadcast. I guess it's that kind of game. First and 10, George on their own 41. And here is Andy Johnson giving to Brulos, and he slipped and fell and was pinned by Tommy Hirot as he got out to about the 42. That's a gain of one, second down and nine. The clock, 10 minutes and seven seconds left to play. The score, Auburn 28, Georgia 20. And the uh, Georgia Bulldogs have second and eight to go. Johnson has two backs in the eye behind him. And he's going to give the Pulos the second back. And he's hit very hard at the 45-yard line by Bill Luca of Memphis, Tennessee. Luca hits him at the 45. Going to be third down there. And here's James Ray in. That's what the, the hand is for. Third down and six to go. And James Ray of Columbia, South Carolina. Third and seven to go, Georgia, on their own 45. Let's see what James Ray will do with it. He's back to throw. Straight back in the pocket. He's got time. He's up the middle. Intercepted by Dave Beck. 45, and he's dropped on a 48 on a great tackle by Shirer. Dave Beck on the interception for Auburn. And Auburn has the football. First and 10 on their own 48 yard line. As James Ray came in, threw the football, and Dave Beck, breaking on the ball, made the interception. I'll repeat, we're in between uh, the two coaches' booths, and 
I think the Auburn coaches are tearing theirs down right now. I don't see anybody over there with a hammer and a saw, but they're doing a little construction work. 8.51. The big O from Fairfield is in to go deep. Johnny Simmons will be the up back, and Shirer is going to be in punt formation. 5.06 left of the game, 28-20. Auburn leads it. Shirer waiting for his snap from center now. Here is the snap, a little bit high, but he handles it, kicks it. Ball is going to be caught by Owens back on the 20-yard line. He's to 25, 30, 35, 40. He's got one man to beat. He's at midfield looking for a block. Cutting back. James Owens is all the way to the Georgia 20-yard line. James Owens, the one man he had to beat, got him as Owens made the big run back and is all the way back to the 19-yard line. The one man, and that was the kicker, Shira. Him. Honeycutt and Shira were both back there, but Shira was the only man with an angle. He had one blocker, and Shira was able to fight through the blocker, slow up Owens enough that he was knocked down. It was a 41-yard kick and about a 51-yard return by James Owens. Auburn has the football. They mark it right on the 20, first and 10 for the Tigers. The big O has rolled back a punt return. All right, wide out to either side. Pro set. Pat Sullivan, delayed to Lowry up the middle, 17-18, they hit at the ball, didn't get it. He's down to the 17, Georgia trying to get the football. Gusty, the punt return. You know, Gary, uh, I've heard a lot of people say, why do they put Owens back? Because he has a tendency to fumble the ball, and I think the reason they put him back was in evidence on that run. To slow up to let the blocker work, then the pursuit helps to catch up. All right, wide out to either side. Second and eight, the ball on the 18 of Georgia. Here is Pat Sullivan, back to throw. Sullivan is going up the middle, little low. Smoltz was open, the ball was just underthrown in the end zone, incomplete. He tried to go to Smoltz in the end zone, and Dick Smoltz was open. Sullivan threw it about two yards behind him, and Smoltz, trying to come back to get it, could not quite hang on. It's incomplete pass, third down and eight to go. Great meeting, and it certainly has been that, and still is. Sullivan to throw. Sullivan has time in the flat, complete to Beasley at the 10, 5, and out. For it over there, but not until he got inside the five. Call it the five for the sake of argument. First and goal to go. The ball is midway between the five and the four, and Auburn has first and goal. On third down, Sullivan to Beasley. 3.55 left in the game. Auburn's football, first and goal to go. Inside the Georgia five. Here's Beasley coming left. And Smaltz is right. Unger and Lowry are the setbacks and the fake to Unger. Sullivan wants to throw. The rush is after him. He backs up. He throws it up the middle. Touchdown to Dick Smoltz. Dick Smoltz running around up the middle. He had run his corner route. When he saw Sullivan was in trouble, he curled back to the middle. And Sullivan, dodging the rush, saw Smaltz open, threw the ball to him. And Auburn now leads it 34 to 20. And a point after is coming. football game and the Auburn offense has put on a show against the best defense in the Southeastern Conference statistically speaking Dave Beck will hold Gardner Jet will kick here's the snap, it's up it is good with time out on the field the score is Auburn 35 Georgia 20 Gary Sanders along with Gusty Earout, our spotters Bill Winger, Kess Fabian, our engineer Dave Andrews, broadcasting from Sanford Field in Athens, Georgia. Roger will be 115, a normal Auburn home game. Here is uh, Sullivan giving to Terry Henley, straight ahead over the 15 to about the 13. Clock is running with 44 seconds. 115 next week on many of these same stations. Here's Ted Smith in. Pat Sullivan is going out. And listen to the hand as Pat Sullivan. The Georgia fans are up. Many of them on this side. The adults are up and clapping as Pat Sullivan leaves the game. Here is David Shelby in the ball game, and Unger is going out. Ball on the 13-yard line. Clock running with 21 seconds. Beasley and Small to wide right. Ted Smith, now at quarterback from Eclectic, Alabama. Smith is running, flags down, and Smith is caught for a loss. Back on about the 17 or 18, hold the phone on the penalty markers. 
Milky, uh, Terry Beasley goes out. Dick Smoltz goes out as Terry Page is in. Smoltz and Beasley, you hear the hand from the Auburn fans across the way. As the uh, big three, you might want to call them at Auburn. Smoltz, Beasley, and Mr. Sullivan have all left the ball game now. Clock shows only five seconds. We'll get in one more play. Well, we won't get that. The clock is going to run out before the ball is snapped. So the game has just ended. And the Auburn Tigers have knocked off unbeaten Georgia, won the football game, and now set it up for a showdown with the Crimson Tide of Alabama. The winner of the Auburn-Alabama game will now be the Southeastern Conference champion. So Auburn getting a measure of revenge for last year when Georgia came in and beat them. And Gusty, I hope you wrote down the score. They've turned the scoreboard off already. I think I can remember it. That's the end of the football game. Your final score, the Auburn Tigers 35, the Georgia Bulldogs 20.